So we have a pair of track controllers uh, that are driving these cursors in the scene. We're driving them full uh, six degrees of freedom, position, X, Y, Z, and orientation, heading, pitch, and roll. Uh, and I have two of them. Uh, that means that I can reach out and grab objects in the scene with either or both hands. And if I grab with both hands, I can scale these objects up and down uh, and rotate. Um, another thing I can do is move my viewpoint around in the world. Uh, and I'm just using the trigger in this case. I grab the world and push it and pull it, and very much like 3D multi-touch. So I'm just grabbing the world, kind of walking through the scene. I can climb a ladder, pulling a rope, that kind of thing. You know, very natural uh, for people who've used an iPad and an iPhone, uh, only in, in full 3D. If I grab with both hands, then I can rotate the world. So I'm just spinning around the point between my two hands. And if I grab with both hands, stretch the world, I can pull myself in as close as I want to, to either do something to the surface or just look at it. Uh, when you're uh, in 3D and uh, in stereo, either with a 3D TV or with the Oculus Rift, these just look like images on the screen and they're getting bigger or smaller, uh, but you really get the sense of scale when you're in, in full stereo. So if I pull in like this, mm -hmm. I'm in the rift, and I peek over the edge, instead of just seeing some objects out there that maybe look a little bit flat. You would see over the edge, right? I'd see over the edge, and that would look like there's a mile between me and those objects out there. And they would, and because, because the objects are actually so big, right? Because they actually are big, because I've just shrunk my viewpoint, or I'm growing yeah. my viewpoint. Gotcha. So what that means is you can operate on this, this scene and kind of build a world that you're interested from in. From any exploring. perspective you want to have. From any perspective. And now I can pull myself down into that world and can experience see what it's like. it first, first person. Um, so on top of that, uh, so that's just visualization. Why don't you give the intro spiel for what MakeVR is? You bet. So uh, uh, MakeVR is a a creative environment, a creative sandbox uh, that can be used for a no by a number of people uh, for a number of different reasons. Uh, it can be used to create uh, uh, virtual goods for uh, putting on online stores to be imported into other people's uh, uh, applications or titles. Uh, it can be used to uh, create and prepare and uh, optimized models for 3D printing. Um, there's a whole generation of uh, 3D print enthusiasts out there now. Or it can be an experience uh, for someone with an Oculus Rift or a 3D TV where you either build your own world, and that's fun enough, but you can actually share these spaces with other people. So if you're in, say, New York, and I'm here, and you've got one of these, and now we're interacting together in the same space, I would see you as a, uh, an avatar. Uh, and maybe you're working on, on the other side of this cube. I swing around here, and there you are. You're making some modifications to mm -hmm. that cube, or maybe building a spaceship. So does uh, make, make VR allow you to have multiple users acting on the same time? Yeah, at the same time, in the same space, at different scales with completely independent viewpoints. That's very cool. So, uh, Do you want to yeah. bring up one of the do you have like the MechBot here? I don't think I do, but I have some other things. Let me bring up something. Um, so another thing, uh, we have this toolbox that uh, uh, floats over our left hand, so we never lose it. One thing about the toolbox is that if I grow the world, it stays the same. It, it stays the same relative to me, so I never lose it. It's always uh, at my fingertips. Um, so. We're presenting uh, all the usual 2D widgets, but there's some other uh, uh, truly 3D widgets uh, that we have that are made possible through immersion, like this color cube. So cool. It's really easy to a 3D color cube. Um, so I'm going to bring up some objects. Let's see what we have in here. Uh, these are the primitives, so I can bring in you know, kind of standard primitives that are. Uh, coming in and just random colors. 
Uh, and actually, before I even bring in anything, let me show you uh, its CAD capabilities. So the, this actually has a professional CAD engine under the hood. So uh, rather than just being able to grab objects and move them around in the scene, I can actually modify their geometry. So I'm going to tell it, uh, the system, tell MakeVR, that this object is the blade, and it's going to cut this object, what we call the stock. And so now I can just do a subtract, and we're making pre precision cuts in that object. I'll say that uh, now you're going to cut you. Just pull the object towards me mm -hmm. and uh, do a subtract or an add. And, and you can export all of these files into appropriate formats? That's right. So this, uh, for let's say I'm interested in printing these in 3D, we will export in uh, STL. Okay. Uh, but this, this goes out as a proper CAD format called uh, .sat. Okay. Uh, the .sat format. Uh, which can, can be converted into just about any solid model. Cool. Yeah, that's pretty important. That's why I was curious. And we'll go also go out in polygonal format as well, uh, allowing people to retessellate. But STL is a polygonal format, so we'll retessellate uh, these to be smoother or, uh, or coarser, depending on uh, the desire of the user.